Well, howdy folks, welcome back to my channel, and there's another list-based video for you today. I went ahead and created a playlist of these, you know, kind of top tens, top fives, and other things like that if you're curious to check out, but I figured it was time for another one, and today I'm gonna talk about the top five instruments that I would recommend to beginners. Now, I want to do a quick disclaimer here. I am not saying in any way, shape, or form that these are the five easiest instruments to master. I'm saying they are the instruments I would recommend to get started. So basically, easy instruments to learn on, but not necessarily easy instruments to master, okay? But I'll talk a little bit more about each of that as I go through the list of why I picked that one, but let's get started. So first up, is the harmonica and this is just the plain everyday 10 hole diatonic harmonica and uh, one of the reasons that i picked that one is because a harmonica is always tuned to a scale typically a major scale they'll have the key on them this particularly one this particular one is tuned to what is the key on this one b flat but they can be tuned to any key a c a d an f you name it so as long as i am playing along with a song in b flat major there aren't any wrong notes on this harmonica um, but that makes it very easy to learn when you don't have to worry about the wrong notes. And the harmonica is a very difficult, extremely difficult instrument to master. It takes a long time to master, but it doesn't take a long time to just get sound out of it. With your 10 holes here, if you blow through a hole, pick a hole to blow through it, like this one right here, you get a note. If you draw through that hole or suck, whichever you want to call it, you get a different note. And it's that way for every hole. So you've got a bunch of different 20, basically 20 different notes on this harmonica and they're all in that same key. So that's why I love the harmonica. It's just quick and easy and immediate to get started. So this particular harmonica is a Kongsheng. Um, I think I paid around $15 for this one, fairly uh, inexpensive, but you can find harmonicas, you know, starting at about seven, $8 and then they can go up to you know, $70, $80 for really nice ones. But still, even, even at the high end, that's still a fairly inexpensive instrument. So I think it's a great one for a beginner to get started with. And the next instrument that I would like to uh, profile here is the kazoo. And um, if you've been watching some of my Kazoo Fridays videos, this is actually a wazoo. Um, but if I take this off, then it's your standard kazoo that you would recognize the horn just uh, adds a little volume and they call this one the wazoo. But anyway, so the reason that I would recommend a kazoo to a beginner is because it's very immediate. And I know everybody says, just hum into it and you get a tone. And that's true. If I just hmm, you start to get a noise, right? Or, or some sort of thing. But when you really start to play the kazoo, you realize pretty quickly that I think you're more kind of saying a, like a burr, 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 almost more like you're singing into the kazoo and that's really where you get those good tones. So, you know, you can kind of develop that, but it's pretty immediate. If you can make the sound with your voice, you can probably make it on a kazoo. Um, and also kazoos are just dirt cheap. Even like the nicest kazoos are still like $10. I mean, you know, you can find kazoos as cheap as about a dollar um, and then on up. So it's a very easy and accessible instrument to get started with. And it's very immediate. You can start to make sounds immediately and you can really develop you know, a technique pretty quickly. And the people, again, that are very good kazoo players have put a ton of time into it. It's, a, it's an instrument that you can go deep with, but it's just very immediate. And I love that about the kazoo. And the next instrument is my Native American flute. And now I know what you're thinking here. Everything so far has been a wind instrument. Are these all wind? No, they're not. And honestly, I don't really think of myself as a wind instrument player, but at least with these ones that I've chose today, the harmonica, the kazoo, and now the Native American flute, I think they are very easy instruments for beginners to get started with. Um, now, a Native American flute, the majority of them out on the market have six holes. And the sixth hole, which is right here between these two, you actually keep covered. So the way that they tell you to hold it is like this, and you just always keep this finger planted to cover that hole. Well, there are also five hole flutes on the market like this one, which I think is way smarter because it's the exact same thing, but you don't have to constantly keep that hole covered. Additionally, you might see these little pieces of leather tied around the flute sometimes to cover that hole, um, which, you know, 
That's basically the same thing as not having it there. So I would recommend everyone, if you're getting started, to get a five-hole fruit. This is five-hole flute, excuse me. This one is from Blue Bear. You can see their little uh, logo right there. But um, there's a number of them out on the market. But what's so nice about the Native American flute is literally you just put your fingers over the five holes, or even if they're six, over the sixth hole, and then you just blow into it. There is no special technique to it. And then as you take your fingers off, the note gets higher. So Native American flutes vary greatly in price, but to get a good beginner one, you're probably gonna spend about $60, $65 um, for a really good one. There actually are some cheaper ones, especially when you get into the higher keys because they get smaller and that generally makes a difference. But I wouldn't show out a lot of money to begin, but I mean, for like a $50, $60 flute can really get you started and really allow you to do a lot of things. Another thing to keep in mind, um, as you go up in key, they tend to get, sh the flutes get shorter. That also means the holes are closer together, which is gonna be easier for a beginner. When you get to some of the lower keys, um, the holes get a little further apart and then it requires a little more hand spread. So I would actually recommend going with, you know, higher key. Anyway, in any case, um, Native American flute is a great beginner's instrument. Okay, next up is the ukulele. And this is a concert ukulele, but I wouldn't get too uh, attached to which, to which particular size. Um, soprano, tenor, they're all uh, about the same thing to learn on. And string instruments are fairly hard instruments to learn, or at least the learning curve is pretty stout. But the reason that I pick the ukulele is because it's actually, I feel like the technique on the ukulele is a lot more immediate to just start getting to the point of playing songs. And what I mean by that is typically when you strum it, you just use kind of your fingers or your fingernails and just kind of do this. And that's a very easy technique to learn compared to all these little finger picking techniques and stuff, you know, they're more advanced. Now again, if you're gonna master this instrument, you're gonna have to learn a lot more stuff. But I also think that that real easy finger strumming like that is more intuitive than using a pick. You can use a pick on a ukulele. Pick is very common on the guitar and a lot of other instruments, but I feel like just to get started, that technique is a lot easier for someone to pick up. Additionally, on your ukulele, there are a number of chords that you can play with one finger, your C major, your C7, your A minor, your A7, so on and so forth. Um, there's a lot of different chords that you can play with just one finger. And then you have a lot of two finger chords too, like your F and some other things. And then when you get into your three finger chords, like your G, So something like that, like I just played, I mean, you can learn that pretty quickly on a ukulele and actually be starting to do that. Additionally, the ukulele lends itself very well to stuff like this. You know, if, if I'm learning that particular thing I just played, I could start like this. And yes, I can do that on any string instrument. You are correct. But with the ukulele, especially if you're trying to sing and play, it just seems to work. And um, this particular one you'll pay about $70 for. But I recently did a video where I compared uh, several ukuleles that were below $50. And you really don't need to spend a lot for a ukulele that sounds pretty good. I've seen ukuleles for as cheap as $20. Some toy ukuleles even cheaper, but I don't know how much faith I would put in those. But literally $30 ukuleles a lot of times uh, are pretty good value. Um, so spending $30, $40 is a great way to get started on a string instrument. And the fifth one on the list here, bongos. So um, bongos, interesting, right? A percussion instrument in this list of wind and string. So um, percussion, a lot of people say, you know, percussion takes an entire lifetime to master. So true, it really does. You can really go as deep as you want with a percussion instrument. But again, this is about learning, not mastering. And I think with the bongos, there's something about just having two drums here that make it very easy to just learn a couple simple patterns and be playing along with people. So you've got a friend that plays guitar or you know um, saxophone or something like that. You can grab a set of bongos and it seems to always work. And then you can just flip it around and play the exact same thing and it sounds different.
And then I feel like there's a bunch of like just simple patterns like that that you can expound upon. Okay, so bongos again are a fairly affordable instrument. I mean, I've seen sets of bongos for as cheap as about $20. I'm not sure how much I would trust those, but I've, I've seen some like $50 sets of bongos like this. I think these were around 60 to 70, but I've seen sets like that that are you know, really pretty good quality. And as far as it is with percussion instruments, that's certainly the one I'd recommend over a lot of other um, percussion instruments. So, you know, bongos, great way to get started. And so there you have it. There is five instruments that I would recommend to get started with. Um, obviously, I could have recommended a lot more. I was trying to uh, keep this list fairly short and tell my reasons why I think that. But, um, you know, your mileage may vary. That's my opinion. So if you got some comments, leave them for me below. If you like this sort of content, give it a thumbs up. And of course, please subscribe. This channel is all about musical miscellany. I'll be back with another episode soon.